Welcome to In the Kitchen with Mary Mack. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how my business got started. So my trusty engineer, Anna, is going to interview me, sort of. <laughs> yeah, I wrote down a bunch of questions. Not sure if they're good or not, but we're going to try it. If I don't want to answer them, I will take this stuffed autograph dog and slap the table with it, which will be a sign to you that I don't want to answer that question. Well, it might, not, it might knock the microphone over. Oh, though. then I won't do that. Never okay. Mind. All right. Yeah, I just got that. <laughs> okay, it was just here. I'm sorry. I was okay. Just, you know. All right. Uh, first question. When did you start baking bread, and how did you turn it into a business? Well, I started baking bread about 28 years ago. And it took me a really long time to learn how to bake bread because baking bread is, when you're trying to learn it by yourself, is a lot harder than you would ever imagine. So um, it took me quite a while to get onto it. Um, and I think it's because uh, I'm a machinist by trade. So whatever, when I'm doing something in the machine shop, um, working with tooling and metal and that sort of thing. I'm always thinking, trying to think of a better way, faster way, more accurate way to do something, uh, which um, it's just a thing. It's, I guess it's a thing that you develop after a while. So I tried to do that with uh, bread, but it wasn't working because apparently you have to follow instructions to make things. Yeah, it, it's chemistry, so if you'd yeah. change the you know, amounts of stuff. <laughs> yeah, and I couldn't, I was, I was really struggling with that. And then a friend gave me a bread recipe um, that someone had given her. So I got that, and it also didn't work for me. <laughs> but I was able to adapt it to my style of baking and make it work for me. And then over the years, I tweaked it and got it to where I can, you know, I could do it. It came out consistent good all the time, very consistent recipe, so I, I uh, got pretty good at baking bread. And then people were asking me, p bread baking got popular, I don't know, I want to say maybe around 25, 20, 25 years ago, people started wanting to bake their own bread. And um, so they would ask me how to bake bread, and I would go to their homes and lug all this stuff with me, big bags of flour and sugar and yeast, because people don't have baking supplies. You listening probably don't, you know, some of you may not have the basic things you might need to bake something like bread, like cooling racks. I was shocked that people don't have cooling racks. That just blows my mind. But Like, most people have sugar, but yeah. not many people have yeast in their house. Yeast, you know? right. Right, or bread pans. Mm -hmm. So um, I would haul all this stuff over to people's houses and show them how to bake bread. And then I got this bright idea to make up a sort of a mix to take over that just had the amount of flour that I needed, the amount of yeast that I needed, the amount of sugar that I needed, etc. And I would take my big bowls over with this mix and um, and do it then with them, show them how to do it. Because I think a lot of the thing of baking bread is knowing how the dough should feel and look at different points during the rises and, and all that sort of thing. And a lot of people you know, get, get nervous or try to rush it or something like that. And it doesn't work for them. So I try to, you know, and that's kind of disturbing. I mean, to me, it was when I first started baking bread thinking I can weld and I can't make a loaf of bread. It was very disturbing to me. So I imagine a lot of people who are successful in other areas of their life, when they try to do something that they perceive to be simple, such as making a loaf of bread are totally knocked off their feet finding out that it's not as simple as it seems. So I guess my goal in starting my business and starting the mixes, making the mixes and selling them was to uh, allow people to make something healthy that they knew what was in it, um, knew the ingredients, and they could do it themselves fairly simply in a fairly short amount of time. So that's that's where the Mary Mac mixes came in, Mary Mac Bakehouse came in, was after I started the business about eight years ago, and that was largely why, because I, I kind of felt bad, because I knew that I had gone through that, and it, it's oddly stressful to not be able to do something like that, so I wanted to help people be able to make their own bread. Good answer, good answer. Uh, second question, which you kind of started going over a little bit, what was the process of getting, like, the professional clearances and the... Uh, 
uh, is it the food inspector or the health inspector? A, um, that kind of stuff. What was that like? It's, at, it's actually an inspector through Department of Agriculture. That was really stressful because sometimes when you when you're going into any sort of a business, what you'll eventually discover is that your idea of how the state works and the state's idea of how the state works are two completely different things. Um, and I would be told that I, I needed to find, like I, I called, I don't even know how many different offices and, and everything is online, but it wasn't online. And then they would say, well, you need to download these forms and turn them in. Well, the forms weren't there. And, and then they would say, uh, you need to do this and you need to do that. And it wasn't anything that I needed to do. So finally, uh, I accidentally got the phone number of the head of the Department of Agriculture for the state of Pennsylvania because I went to a, <laughs> I went to a, to a uh, um, an informational meeting at the East, East Side Food Co-op in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They had an informational meeting, which was awesome. It was like going to a, a hippie feast. I don't even know how to say that. It was really, there were a, a, a it was a very different experience. The people were there at the time that I went. It was very, um, it felt very 60-ish. <laughs> Sharing food with a total stranger. I don't even, it was very weird. But anyway, it, it worked out really well, and I got an information pack, and in the information pack there was a business card with this person's name on it and the phone number, so I called it. Because I was like at the end of my rope, and I called this number, and the person that answered the phone said, how did you get this number? And I said, well, it was in an information pack that I got. And I said, I, I'm trying to, you know, start my own home baking business and I can't get any help anywhere. So they put me through to this woman and the woman answers the phone and she says, how did you get my number? So I told her again and she said, oh, well, I, she goes, well, all that information is on the website. And I said, no, it isn't. Everyone keeps telling me that, but they're, the links are are there are blanks? There's nothing in your like links. Dead links. Yeah, they're dead links. Yeah. You click on it, nothing happens. I said, there's nothing there, and um, and I said, so I, I haven't been able to do anything because everybody's telling me to talk to this person, and talk to that person, and I'm really running into dead ends. So, this person who I can't remember her name sadly, but um, she sent me a packet of information. She gave me a phone number to call for the person who would be my local inspector, and the next day, all the links were live on their website. <laughs> so, so you're welcome, everyone else who got licensed after I did. A lot of to... people were fired that day. Um, I'm I sure, and I'm probably <laughs> thinking somebody got in trouble for putting her personal business cards into all those gift packs at oh, the yeah. Eastside Food Co-op event. Did it feel like you accidentally called the FBI? Um, like... <laughs> it, it was a little funny because when everybody's well, when someone answers the phone and said, "How did you get my number?" I, I it made me kind of wonder who who I had actually called yeah. and then um, <laughs> and then like after after I got off the phone with her I looked her up online and I'm like oh my gosh I just called the head of the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture you know she actually <laughs> talked to me on the phone but that's kind of how I roll anyways <laughs> I never know what's going on I just I go through life and stuff happens and whatever but it, it worked out really well and I was able to get um, I found out what I needed to do. It's not that hard. What I have is called a home baking license, and it was something the Department of Agriculture developed for people that wanted to bake for, like, what they call it. There's designations for food in the state of Pennsylvania. There's hazardous food and non-hazardous food. Hazardous food could potentially kill you, and non-hazardous food won't. Um, non-hazardous food would be, like, breads, cookies, some pies, some canned things that are acidic, stuff like that. Um, a hazardous food, an example of that would be like a pumpkin pie. Because it has eggs and dairy ingredients in it, it could, you know, actually get bacteria in it that could kill you. You get food poisoning. Cheesecakes are considered hazardous. And cheesecakes are hazardous on two levels because, first of all, they're very high in calories. But secondly, <laughs> if you're unlicensed and, you you know, they're not kept cool properly. And they are could, addictive. Yes. So yes. is, is it the eggs that are the problem or the dairy? Because I know it, most cookies do already have eggs in them, it's but the, they're fine. It's the eggs and the dairy to the extent that it is a larger ingredient in the mixture. So, for example, if it was a, say it was a um, cream pie, a cream mm -hmm. type pie that's not necessarily baked, but it's refrigerated, that's something that a person with a home baking license 
would not want to sell because that's something that could potentially um, cause someone to get food poisoning or get sick. Yeah. So it's not like, say for example, you're making something that has eggs and milk and stuff in it. If I'm making it, I'm baking that to where it is no longer in a liquid state. But if you're making a pumpkin pie, it's baked only to the point that it sets. So it's a semi-liquid state. So that's that's why. And that's why a lot of people have questions about, how come my church can't sell pies for this festival? Well, it's because some very nice person in your church could make a pie that could potentially make everyone sick. So you that yeah. that's kind of thing. But my license is I am allowed to make to sell bake and sell bread, cookies, cakes, that sort of thing. It's it's a limited license, which means I don't have to have a commercial kitchen. My personal home kitchen is inspected and um, then I have to have my well water tested. I have to make sure that my water heater is up to a certain temperature and those sorts of things and that's my inspection so um oh here's a good question uh, relating to the water how do weather changes or like different uh kinds of water like well water versus city water affect the baking process weather does a lot and i'm not exactly sure i know sometimes when the barometer is rising or falling whatever the bread is also rising and falling. Sometimes you can't get a good rise out of your bread if the weather is changing. Uh, sometimes if it's really, really humid out, you can't get a good rise out of your bread. It's it's kind of interesting that it would affect it, but but it it actually does. Um, water, I've noticed for myself because I've baked bread all over the place, stayed at friends, and you know made bread to make pizza and different places and um, my water that I have here seems to make a very good bread. I have tried to use uh, bottled water. It didn't work as well. I have baked bread in Florida in a couple different locations and um, I, don't, I, I don't know, it never seems quite the same but I guess it would be because I have a well, you have certain minerals in it and it does taste like well water, so that it probably adds extra minerals to your yeah. bread even. Adds an extra taste. Cool? But it has been tested and it's you know, it's good safe drinking water, so so that's good. Uh, adds a little bit of calcium, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> you get a lot of extras. You get a lot of extras in it. What is your personal favorite kind of bread? Not to bake, but your favorite kind of bread to eat. My favorite kind of bread to eat is a good I would say a good uh, sourdough uh, made from a Levain starter, which is like a, a yeast mother, and um, baked in a European induction oven, which would yield the sort of bread that the crust is very hard and the bread is very elastic and um, very tart tasting. That's what I like. I can't make that. I've tried to make sourdough on my own, because the, the style of bread that I make is called a daily loaf, which is um, a daily loaf is baked in a pan usually, um, and it it is made with a different sort of a system. You're just using yeast out of a packet into the mix, and it doesn't produce the same sort of ginormous air bubbles that you get in a uh, Levain style bread, where you have a yeast that's a it's a growing um, it's kind of like a when you when you do sourdough you do the same thing but your yeast you have to grow your yeast so you have to make this concoction and keep it in your refrigerator and feed it and it's kind of sounds like a horror movie but it, it grows in your refrigerator and then you use part of that when you make your bread and it's real soury almost like a um, it's almost like an IPA it's this sour beery smelling thing and it uh, you put it in your bread and it gives it a lot of flavor I the last time I made sourdough bread I forgot that I had the starter in the back of my refrigerator and I had it in this Tupperware container that was a it was like a quart size cylindrical container with a flat lid and I looked into the refrigerator one day and I saw this thing in the back and it sort of looked like 
You know those um, observatories where they have the really big telescopes and they have that big dome roof on yeah. them? That's what my Tupperware container looked like. Because Ooh. the gas inside had stretched the plastic out on the lid, but the lid was miraculously holding. I don't I even know. Even, I didn't even know those lids could stretch. Neither did that. I. <laughs> it did. So I very carefully, like I was handling a bomb, took it out of the refrigerator and took it outside and set it free in the woods. And it roams there today. Did you have to call the sourdough disposal squad? No, I did not. But I think Bigfoot has it now. But it was pretty... <laughs> after that, I thought, it's probably really not a good idea for me to do this sort of thing, being as my thoughts were elsewhere and I forgot it was in my refrigerator. So... They make better sa- uh, sourdough in San Francisco, that's, anyway. That's yeah. true. That's you can always true. order it. <laughs> you can get a decent sourdough. There's a really good bakery over in uh, Boardman, Ohio, called The Bread Chef, that has a really good, uh, very good sourdough breads. Very good breads. Good baguettes, too. Okay. Now, in the opposite direction, what is your opinion of Wonder Bread? <sighs> I think that says it all. Yes. Okay, moving on. <laughs> um, have you ever used a bread machine? I know normally you use, like, you just make it in a bowl, but have you ever tried a bread machine? I did try one one time, and I don't, and not that I hold anything against a bread machine, but it was so hard to get the bread out, and then that, like, there's a paddle in there. It goes up inside your loaf of bread. You gotta rip that out. I know a lot of people use them, and, and, I'm sure they've become more modernized than when I used one. Uh, my my mixes will actually work in a bread machine. I have eight different types of bread, and they all work in a bread machine. I've had oh I've had at least a half dozen different people try them in their bread machines, variety of bread machines, and they they work really well. But I um, I've only used one once. But for me, with as large as our family was, a bread machine was totally ineffective in feeding us. So I usually made five loaves of bread at a time. So a lot of bread it is and then it was gone almost instantly (laughs) yes yes true okay um how long does it usually take for the larger batches of bread to rise since you're not just making a single batch at a time if it's just the white um my white bread is single rise so that takes about an hour and a half for a batch that'll make six loaves of bread to rise all in all it takes probably for white bread it takes about three hours start to finish to make a batch that'll make six loaves. And not that you're attending it all the time, but you have to let it rise. And what I mean by single rise is I mix everything up and let it sit there and rise, you know, and then Mm -hmm. I punch it down and make the loaves. The um, other types of bread, uh, I have whole wheat, oatmeal wheat germ, rye, onion rye, seedless rye, and pumpernickel are all double rise breads. What that means is you mix it up, let it rise, punch it all down, flip it, Let it rise again, punch it down, and then form your loaves. That can take significantly longer. Usually, I'd I'd usually add like an extra hour onto that just because that second rise. But when I'm baking, like when when I'm baking for um, my store, Standing Chimney, I'll have two or three going at the same time. And I'll, I'll punch this one down and flip that one and do that one. And it's just like six hours of solid bread baking. Kind of like they do in the, uh, you know, the TV cooking shows where, all right, just punch this one down, pull out the one that's ready. <laughs> yes, yes, I can, I run, I sort of uh, have modeled my career after Julia Child, and although I don't have those six people underneath the counter handing me stuff, but but it is, it's just a nonstop, you're constantly, constantly baking one, forming one, letting one rise, whatever, so... Well, that's all the questions I had, unless you want to tell the baking demo story, but that's up to you. My baking demo story. I've done, uh, groups will have me come in and show them how to make bread or whatever. So um, the first time I ever did a baking demo, I was supposed to go in and teach people how to make bread. And I thought, okay, I can do that. So I went in and it was a group of 40 women, a mom's group. So I went in and I was, uh, well, uh, let me just step back a little bit. I was preparing for how I was going to do this because I had never done it before. So I I watched a lot of cooking shows and um, I thought, uh, that's what I'll do. I'll do a cooking show style. I'll I'll make dough and take it along and then I'll mix the dough up when I get there, show them how to mix the dough, take the dough I took along, which had been rising, punch it down, make my loaves, 
you know, and kind of do everything in reverse and it should all pan out. I got a call in about the middle of the week and they, the person who was setting all this up said, do you make pies? And I said, yeah, I, I have made pies. And she said, well, could you also show us how to make a pie? And I thought, well, I don't know if I can do that. I don't, I don't know. And I said, <laughs> ah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. What the heck? So I then had to figure out how I was going to do the pie. So again, I made a pie for my finished product so I could, you know, reach under my table and pull out my, and this is what your pie will look like when it's done thing. So I went in and um, I thought, well, I'll do the bread first. And then while the bread is baking, I can show them how to do the pie and then I'll pull this pie out. So I did the bread. It all worked. It worked out really, really well. It was like amazing how well it worked out up until a certain point. Um, when I got to the pie, the way I do a pie crust is I, I put all the ingredients into a, a plastic bowl with a snap-on lid and then I shake them in there because you don't want to overwork your pie crust. So uh, I put all the ingredients into the bowl and started to shake it and the lid came off and this person who um, in the group was a sort of a not the most fun person that you'd want to hang around with was right in the front row the lid came off and all of the pie crust ingredients flew out onto her and it was very it was a, a very tense moment and kind of dead quiet for a minute and then I said don't ever let that happen and I snapped the lid on and kept going and then everybody started laughing and the person also laughed and I was able to get through it and I, I was so I was like very nervous about that because I thought this could go very badly but she was a good sport about it actually and I ended up getting through it and then had the, the pie thing worked out too it went really really well <laughs> the other times I've done it it has not worked so well but that particular time it was like perfect which lulled me into a false sense of security Okay, now that you know my history, we can get on with other shows at some certain point that are a little more fun, mm -hmm. hopefully, and we'll play a game and all that. And thank you for listening, if you are, and if you're not, too bad for you.